Well, good morning again, and welcome to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. Well, the other day at uh, Bible study, we were, uh, you know, we, we kind of talk about different things, and uh, at the end of our study or at the beginning, and uh, just to get on the light side, where we get into the study of the Word of God, and uh, the conversation kind of turned them to, uh, to memories, uh, and uh, I thought back of uh, when I was in a service. This was back in uh, the 1950s. In fact, I think uh, some of the pictures I'll share with you were taken in 1958. Uh, you know, it, it just kind of sparked something in my mind. Memories. Uh, what memories are we going to have when we get to heaven? Are we going to remember everything from this life? And then you think about the new heavens and the new earth. Oh, excuse me. Uh do you think we're going to remember when we get on the new heavens and the new earth, we're going to remember the things from the old earth, the old heavens that it talks about? I believe there are some things uh, that we will remember, and uh, do we know what they will be? Well, I, I, I found an article I'm going to share with you today, but uh, first I just wanted to talk to you about some of the things that I was thinking about. I had mentioned that uh, I remember when I was back on the Iwo Jima uh, and we all kind of remember from history that Iwo Jima was uh, a strategic island during the war uh, with the Japanese and we uh, had to take that island uh, and the Japanese had occupied it. So there was this fierce battle, a lot of lives were lost. And at the end, the great memorial where they raised the flag up on Mount Suribachi. Actually, I was on the top of Mount Suribachi and uh, oh, it was quite an experience, but uh, that was things of the past. But I did, I did tell the story about how big uh, these rats were on the island, they were huge. And uh, I said I had some photos of these, these rats, and uh, I I talked I, I told a story about how they ran uh, through a screen door that I had on this old trailer that I stayed in uh, while I was on the island. I was on the island about ten and a half months, and uh, I was in the motor pool, and I ran the dispatch office and and drove some of the equipment and stuff in the motor pool. <clears throat> well, uh, one night uh, I had, well, kind of going back a little bit, uh, during the day I drank coffee, and I had uh, a cup of coffee on my desk, but I, I took uh, cream in my coffee, so I went up and I got some cream from the, the dining hall, and uh, I had forgotten about it, and I had set it down on the floor next to my desk. And uh, that night when I was in bed, I heard the screen door swing open and close. And uh, I sat up in bed, and I couldn't see, so I reached over and I turned the light on on my desk because I could reach it. And uh, I seen this huge rat that had come in, and I suppose that cream had soured and and the smell had drawn him in. And uh, so I picked up this paperweight and I threw it at him, but I missed him. But it spooked him and he turned around and he ran out while the door swung in. And he ran right through the screen. The screen was rotten because it's a tropical island. And uh, well, I ended up, uh, had to uh, fix the screen. But uh, that's kind of the, one of the memories that I shared. And so I wanted to talk about memories today. Let me just uh, share my screen. This is me sitting in front of my trailer, and that's the screen door I was just telling you about. And uh, uh, if I go back, 
uh, I can show you a picture of this trailer that I lived in. I lived in it for, I, I moved out of the Quonset huts because the Quonset huts were, uh, I mean, everybody, there was no air conditioning, everybody sweating and the smell in the Quonset huts. I figured I'm better off if I just lived in a trailer alone, which I did. Uh, oop, this is a Japanese Buddha that was on the island. Got to go this way. Oh, that was taken on Mount Suribachi, uh This is the trailer, anyway, that I uh, that I lived in. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't very much. But that was the dispatch window right here. And, uh, but anyway, that was one of my memories that I had. So, uh, thinking about that, uh... I thought we would talk about memories today and kind of what the Bible had to say about them. And uh, I looked up a uh, an article online and uh, I thought I'd share this article with you and we can kind of read it. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, I could try to make it a little bigger too. But let me go back to my other screen here and let me... I'm going to start uh, start the article and then I'll make it bigger. And we'll read it out loud. What will we remember in heaven? That's the entitled. And I thought this was really good. And it was by John Piper. And I found it very well written. So let's just play it and, and read it. And uh, you'll get what I'm driving at this morning. A friend wrote me and asked a question about Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, which says, in the NASB, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. He asked, do you think this verse means that when we go to heaven, there will be absolutely no memory of the former heavens and earth? If so, do you think this could also mean that all remembrances of this life will go away? Here is what I wrote back, no. This verse does not mean there are no memories at all in heaven and in the age to come. Two reasons, one, notice the parallel between, former things, in verse 17, and, former troubles, in verse 16. Verse 16 says, he who blesses himself in the land shall bless himself by the God of truth, and he who takes an oath in the land shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten and are hidden from my eyes. The close parallel between former troubles in verse 16 and former things in verse 17 make me think that former things does not mean all things, but things that, if we remembered them, would trouble us, and we will not be troubled in the age to come. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. 2. The book of Revelation says that in heaven we will sing the song of the Lamb and of Moses, Revelation chapter 15 verse 3, which is a song about past history. So, if we are going to sing about the great works of God in history we can't forget them. But here's a catch. The crucifixion of the Lamb was one of the troubles of the world. It was horrific. So, it seems to be in the class of things that should be remembered no more. It was so full of pain. So my conclusion is, what we will forget and what we will remember is not a simple class of bad and good. Rather we will forget and remember things in accord with what will maximize our enjoyment of God. If remembering something enhances our worship, we will remember it. If it would hinder our worship, we will forget it. As an analogy consider this. In Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 to 14 Paul says, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul seems to commend, forgetting, the past. But in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 12 he says, Remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, were at that time separated from Christ. So again, as I try to discern what should be remembered and what should be forgotten, I answer, remember whatever deepens your love to Christ and zeal to obey. And forget whatever would paralyze your will to follow him with joy. Yeah, a very interesting article, and uh, if you look at that that scripture that he refers to in Philippians three thirteen through fourteen, where where Paul did say, "But one thing I do, forgetting uh, 
what lies behind. And uh, that doesn't mean that we just forget all our memories uh, because uh, there were some real good memories that I had with my my family and my childhood being raised up and some of the good times that we uh, experienced. Uh, I don't think Paul means that. Uh, he just uh, means that uh, we should forget some of those things that uh, really hinder our... Um, we can't we can't just ponder them uh, and just be so engrossed in, in our past life. But we are to remember uh, what we were and uh, some of the things that we did uh, as offenders of God, and we have offended God. And... Uh, you know, when I think about things like that, I, I think about how how terrible my life was in a way. I I've, I you know I've done things that uh, I'm sure not proud of, and I've done things that were outright evil and uh, terrible, and I sinned, and but God forgave all that. And I'm, I'm going to remember those things, uh, I believe, even in heaven. I'm going to remember uh, how much uh, I offended God. Uh, now, as far as sin goes, there's going to be no sin in heaven. So, I mean, to try to, try to uh, understand what God has in store for us, it's almost too much for our finite minds. Uh, so we're just going to have to trust God, just like we trust him for our salvation. We're going to have to trust that he's got some plan for our eternal life, that we are going to uh, be there forever, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. We're going to enjoy it. There's going to be no sorrow, no tears. Uh, but yes, I believe we will remember things from our past. And like he had brought out in this article, uh, John Piper wrote, that we will uh, remember how terrible the death of Christ was when he paid the penalty for our sins. And I believe we're going to remember that. And uh, because... Uh, we're going to be praising him in heaven and we're going to be thanking him that we're there and the reason I believe that we will be doing this is because Christ uh, wants us to remember uh, some of these things and that kind of brings us to do we are we going to remember our loved ones yeah I believe we are they're going to they're going to be different just like we're going to be different and uh Am I going to remember my wife? Uh, we've been married for uh, 60 years now. Am I going to remember my wife when I get to heaven? Is she going to remember me? Yes, but it's going to be totally different because the, it tells us in heaven that we are like the angels. We are not uh, going to be married or given in marriage because uh, we're all going to be equal uh, in a sense that uh, there's going to be no male or female. We're just going to be uh, in heaven. I don't know what we, even what we'll be called. Uh, like we know the angels are called angels. I don't know if we're going to be called humans. or. But I know one thing. God loves me, and he's going to do what's best for me. So when I think about that this morning, uh, and... Uh, I hope you think about things like this that you're 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 heavenly minded. Uh, I know we're down on earth here, and we will be here. In, fi in fact, the Lord prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, "Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one." Uh, so, while we're here on earth, uh, may we just 
be occupied with our heavenly position and what it'll be. And someday, I know soon for me, uh, uh, I'm in my 80s, and I know that uh, it won't be long and I'll be with the Lord. But I thank the Lord that I'm here right now with my wife and um, my family, and I've got a chance to see my grandchildren grow up and my great-grandchildren grow up. I got great-grandchildren that are in their teens, and I never thought I would see that. And uh, like it says in the Bible, my quiver is full of arrows. <laughs> referring to my children and my children's children and my children's children's children. Yeah. Well, with that, let's just close in prayer and uh, may the Lord bless your day. Lord, again, we just think about these things, uh, about being heavenly minded. Uh, Lord, and we think about our memories. Uh, I know I have so many good memories. I, I was going back and looking through old photos and uh, it just brings back such pleasurous memories, but still at the same time, I think of my life and how terrible it was without knowing you, Lord. I know there are some that are uh, maybe watching this uh, podcast that uh, got saved at a very young age uh, and didn't experience maybe some of the things I experienced. Lord, I know you saved me at an older age, at 40, and... Uh, Lord, I had 40 years of living a terrible life without you. But then you're giving me over 40 years now of life with you, Lord. And uh, what a blessing that is. I wished I would have known you beforehand, but then, Lord, I, I wouldn't have maybe appreciated you as much. I don't know. But I know that there are some believers that have gotten saved at a young age that uh, love you as much as I love you and uh, remember you and all that you have done for, for me and for others, Lord. Uh, for God so loved the world. Uh, that means he loved each and every one of us. But it says, whosoever, and uh, we can put our names in that place, whosoever, so God loved the world and gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And someday I believe, Lord, I'm going to remember all this, and I'm going to even remember maybe what I'm doing right now. Uh, all I know is that heaven will be so great that I won't be occupied with the things of the past, but I will be occupied with the things uh, of the future, and I have a bright future, an eternal future, because of what you did when you went to the cross of Calvary. So we thank you this morning, Lord, as we, we uh, go on with our day, and we don't know how many days we have here on earth, but for every day we have, we thank you for it, and for every breath we take, we thank you for it. And Lord, just thank you for uh, everything that you do for us. You are so kind and so loving kindness that, that we, we can't even comprehend your love. It's so deep. And may we love you because you first loved us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a great day, and I'm going to end again. Just a reminder, don't say God is silent when your Bible is closed. Read your Bible and God will speak to you. Uh, so God bless you and have a great day.